Hello again. In this video, we're going to look at color and we're going to look at color profiling and gamut and sRGB and a few things around that. And I'm going to show you how to save a file from Lightroom and Photoshop using sRGB. And we're going to talk about consistency across devices and through to and display units. And this has already come about because a few weeks ago we did a video um, of an unboxing of a projector, which we don't normally do. We don't normally do that kind of thing. Um, the video to it there if, you, if you're interested. Um, and uh, what that did is brought up a, a whole conversation about colour and, uh, and about how we ensure that the image we take on our cameras and process on our computers and then finally display on our screens or projectors or even printers um, are consistent. Uh, using the same color space and actually using you know the same color so the, the, the colors we see on the screen are the colors that we see on another screen or, or, or whatever so the way we're going to do that is we're going to talk about color space and the first thing that springs into a lot of people's mind when they start talking about color is the word gamut so you hear the word gamut an awful lot the dictionary says that gamut is a range of something um, and indeed it is. And in, in, in terms of colour, it's the range of colours. So our eyes have a gamut. In fact, it's a very common gamut. It's plotted on a graph. And here is a copy of it there. Um, there's a nice little chart there that shows you the gamut of our eye. And what that is doing is plotting on a graph um, the, the colours that our eyes can see. So this is the range of colours. So we can see all those colours with our eyes and it's all lovely and everyone's happy. Now, all this equipment that we use around us uses color profiles because these can't, you know, this camera can't see the same colors that my eye can see. Although it can, it just can't see the same range of colors. And, and that creates us a bit of a problem because at the end of the day, we are going to look at any image we take with our eyes. So we need to ensure that we've got consistency across our products. If we look at this chocolate bar is in a red wrapper. If I take a photograph of this chocolate bar, how does this camera here, this Nikon camera, know that it's the same color looking at? That doesn't make sense, does it? It's the same color as I might take on this um, mobile phone. And then when I take this color, for let's forget exposure and brightness and contrast for a minute, let's forget that. And just think about the purity of that red. Let's say these two cameras have taken a picture of that, of that red and that then goes onto the computer. How do we know that we're looking at the same red? They're interpreting that red in the same way and presenting it to me on the screen so I can process it and that when I finish processing it and I decide to display it, display it on that screen or on a projector, which you can't see hanging from the ceiling, um, that um, we've actually got the same red consistently throughout all those devices, but more importantly, through the processing and displaying of those devices. It does that through using color profiles. The most common color profile, the one that's universally, 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 I can say that in a moment, accepted online is sRGB. Pretty much every device on the internet and online uses sRGB as its color profile. There are others. You will have heard of Profoto, Adobe RGB, um, and, and, and others, uh, but the key one is sRGB. Now let's go back to that image, um, the graph on the right hand side there that shows what we can see with our eyes. And let's overlay onto that the, the definition, the space, the shape that each of those color profiles, sRGB, Profoto and Adobe RGB create on that graph we can instantly see that they're all a different shape. And the smallest of those is actually sRGB. So sRGB has got a quite a small color space compared to some of the other ones. Now that isn't a problem because actually our eyes can see enough um, of those colors not for it to be an issue. However, what happens is if you, if you store an image in one profile from one device and then display it on another device using a different profile. So let's say we take a, a Profoto file, store it with Profoto, and then open it up and display it on an sRGB device. 
that device is going to interpret the colour in a different way. And that colour is going to look really skew with and strange. So it's really important that we use a consistent profile when we're displaying images. And nine times out of 10, in fact, 99 times out of 100, that profile is sRGB. Now let's show you how to create an sRGB file in two products, two products that we all use every day, Lightroom and Photoshop. And let's jump on the computer to have a look at that now. So here we are, here we are in, um, uh, here we are, here we are in uh, Lightroom. And here's a photograph of uh, Dan Bolton, an artist uh, that's uh, extremely good at uh, his synth music. We're going to save this image using sRGB. Now it's really, really simple in Lightroom. We right click, we move down to export, and there's a number of ways to get to export. Pop across, we get our export panel, and we can set all our, all our documents of, of whatever file name we want, etc., etc., etc. And then we get down to our file settings. This is where we will pick things like whether we want to save a JPEG, a, a Photoshop file, a TIFF, a DNG, or whatever. We have to pick our quality, but you'll notice here there is a box that says color space. And that says sRGB, that is my absolute standard. That's the standard that most people use. And all we need to do is we just need to make sure that that says sRGB. If we say Profoto or Adobe or Display with P3, it's gonna look weird when we finally see that image. So we just need to make sure that that says sRGB. And we can go and play by all other settings and then hit export and job, the job's done. That's it, that is, that file has been exported to my computer now using sRGB. It's as simple as that. Now let's jump into Photoshop, because Photoshop is a little bit different. With Photoshop, we can work in any profile we like, and um, it's, it's a good idea to work in, in, um, in, in one, so we can, uh, we can do all that with, uh, with color settings, and you know, we can say, well, working space is sRGB. You can change that if you wish to a different one, but I always stick with sRGB. So that's the first thing to do, is maybe make sure you're working with sRGB as your, uh, as your working color space. Now then, as you get to the end of your process and you want to save your file because you're going to be using it for something else, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to convert your image to that color profile. Now you'll see there, I'm actually working in sRGB, and I'm, so I don't need to do this necessarily, but it's always good to check that you're working in sRGB. If we were working in, let's go back to, let's go back to color settings, and let's say we were working in uh, Adobe RGB. There we go. We could work in that quite happily. We could we could work on the image. You might see the reds have actually just dulled a little bit there, and that and that's the transition from one profile to another. What we would then do is we would convert the image to a profile when we finished, and you'll notice at the top. We're still actually using sRGB, uh, but you'll notice that the colors in the back have already changed a little bit, and we would make sure that that destination profile is sRGB. That's just really important just to make sure that everything is using sRGB. And we want to file this, so we do, do a file save on this. It will carry that profile with it. And there you go, and we can see that our embedded profile is sRGB. As long as it says sRGB there, we're good to go. We can pick our, uh, our file format, um, sorry, our file format in here, uh, JPEG for example, and it will, it will save very well. Now the one thing we need to watch out for, and this is a bit of a warning, and therefore it's always good to make a duplicate of your image if you are going to change color profile, is let's say that we've got a few layers in this image, and let's say that we are now going to assign a profile. We're going to, sorry, we're going to convert it to a profile. Let's say we've been working in Profoto or whatever came up with our camera and we're gonna convert it to sRGB. When we do that, watch what happens down here to our layers. They've gone. So what happens when you convert to a profile is it will flatten your image. Be very aware of that because if you don't notice it when it happens and for 10 minutes later you go around and go, oh, where have all my layers gone? They, they've gone, you've got to come back in your history and find them. So just be really aware of when you convert to a color profile that you could lose your layers. So if you are working through an image in, in, a, high, in, a, in a different profile and then you do a convert to sRGB, 
best to take a copy of your image first and, and do that on a copy rather than the original because you will flatten your images. And it, and it really is as simple as that. So there's two images there. We've, we've flattened them. Um, we've, sorry, we've saved them as uh, sRGB. And now we know that when we say, take that to, um, to another location and present that to somebody on a, on a TV screen or on a projector, it's actually going to be exactly the same color profile. And because we've, that's the same color profile, it's going to look the same on those devices. I hope that helps. It is a massive topic. There is a lot to talk about, and I know people that can talk about color profiling for a whole day, and you'll still not know everything. Um, but in its simplest term, that's the easiest way to do color profiling. One thing we haven't mentioned is color profiling for printing. If you want to be assured that the print that you are looking at is the same as the screen, that's a different topic completely. And there's another video for that. There's a link to that up in the top corner there. And that will, um, and that will uh, show you how to profile your printer for different color profiles. Well, I hope that's helped. Um, if it has, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave us some comments down below. There's a button just there as well that you can use to, uh, to subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you want to watch some more videos, try these two because uh, they've, uh, they've been picked from our channel that um, hopefully you'll enjoy those. Um, until next time, thank you very much for watching.